How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. It's another one of those times where my schedule got really busy and I don't have a video ready and so yeah, you get to do a sweet commentary track where you just revisit old games. Those are nice and simple, easy to put together. The theme of this one is old game jam games I worked on. I took part in four. I'm specifically showing off three of them. Fish Out of Water is something I specifically made for the very first Newgrounds game jam. Made back in the summer, July 2010, over a decade ago. It was organized by Austin Breed. You were allowed to sign up for this as a programmer, an artist, a musician, and just like other assorted contributions. There was much more artists than programmers who signed up, so we ended up with a programmer, myself as an artist, one other artist, and someone else who was meant to just be random, who ended up being Edic, who I think people know now quite well. He has his own very successful YouTube channel, has made lots of games over the years. All of this music that you're hearing, this incredible looping song and all those throughout the game, are these acapella tracks that he did. I don't think he had ever really made music before, at least not in this style. He just took it upon himself, he was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do that, that sounds fun. And like, it really has this bubbly, gurgly quality to it that I think fits really well with a fish out of water. I think he did such a fantastic job. I've always loved the music in this game throughout because there's menu music, main music, and like boss music. This is like a quick react time game. I think what we had in mind is kind of like Marvin Spectrum, things like that. Maybe we could put our own little twist on it. There is a story mode and an endless. I think I need to admit right now I've never beaten this game. I find it very difficult. <laughs> Fish out of water was something you were never ever going to be able to Google. Fish out of water, I think some like 90s hip hop album came up or something, but it was less competition. That was what we landed on. Coming in at the wire, we just needed a name for the game. I think this is the first game I did this style of intro on. It's something I kind of like cringe at whenever I do. I've done it multiple times of just kind of like a comic book style intro rather than anything properly animated. As somebody who considers themselves an animator, it just feels like a bit of a shortcut, but it's effective. And I think this one turned out quite well considering we only had like 48 hours. I genuinely, I love that transi transition as well. I genuinely can't remember if this was done in 48 or 72 hours. And some of those original pages on Newgrounds are gone, unfortunately. I don't think there was any theme. No, it was summer. It was summer themed, and I think that was all we had to go off of. Why, hello there! In this summer drought, this poor fish has decided to run around looking for new pools of water. Help him out on his quest by using left and right to move around, and the A button to jump. Watch out for sea urchins, oysters, eels, turtles, and puffin fish that are weak when they are tired. That I don't remember the puffin. That must be uh, the puffin fish is a boss thing. I think the programmer psychosis. I'm pretty sure he just took over writing the instructions. That that bubble effect is so cool. You would think that you would be able to bounce off the backs of the turtles or something. I don't believe you. You can. Okay, well that's kind of fun. The rest of them, the urchins, the uh, the clams, everything else, you do have to jump over. I think Eddie's uh, voice acting for the, the sound effects for everything. Here's our first boss. Which, oh, the boss battle music is dope as well. I really enjoyed animating the puffer fish. The way he like inflates himself up. Then you bounce off of him when he's weak, when he's tired. It like signals that to you very directly. This first level is, you know, very simple. Very easy introduction to things. I really liked the idea of this bowl, fish bowl character, I think I probably combined ideas from like Earthworm Jim comes to mind and like I'm trying to think of other things that feature similar like a, a silly concept like that. I feel like I definitely had a few inspirations. I remember talking in our group chat that we had that was called like Titan Pad or something where you're all live editing what 
essentially as a Google Doc, I think kind of before Google Docs were a thing, there was a chat and a document and you're just spitballing ideas and basically as soon as anything seems viable, you just jump on it and you just start making it, which is cool. I wanted these next legs to have more of like the steampunk feel. I also, I made the background very, very late in all of it and it felt quite slapped together. Looking back at it, I'm, I'm relatively happy with it. The loop is short though. Every time it curves back around is when the loop starts again. It's not a lot going on there. But there's a bit of parallax and everything. I think it looks fine. I liked the idea as as you have a new way of interacting each time because now you can jump and duck that you know you would have an upgraded style of leg. So you go from just these wood stilts to this kind of steampunk thing. You'll notice I did a lot of the art and that was me just being like, I thought I was gonna be the only artist. I want this to be my game jam and kind of, I don't know, this arrogance or something of being like 17 years old and wanting this to feel like mine rather than anything collaborative. And so I think I did as much of it as I could. I dibsed every new part of it. And obviously now I would prefer to work with someone else and like come up with cool ways to integrate our art styles. But that just wasn't my mindset at the time. That blowfish got what was coming to him. Nice work. Thanks to these new steam powered legs, our fish friend here can now slide under any obstacles in his way with the S button, as well as the jumpable enemies you know and love from the previous level. Watch out for seagulls, squids, and piranhas. These legs are also great at kicking floating lily pads from underneath giant frogs. Perhaps a hint. Be sure to slide your way to safety. Thinking of bosses that would integrate the new concept was always fun. Uh, ballooned piranhas was like just a amazing concept that I don't remember. It's hard to say who that came from. It was just silly enough. Uh, the, the squid, I'm really happy with the animation on the squid. The seagull looks pretty lame, but hilariously, I apparently draw seagulls the exact same way in this game as I did in Pirate Launch. They wouldn't have come out that far apart. But this was, it was just an excuse to try and, and finish a game. I had a few released games, but not very many. And I was like, I want to work with new people. I want to try new things. I like the idea of you come up with and execu execute a full game in such a short period of time. You know, that's the entire appeal of all of this. Ooh, that gets tricky. Now we're ready for our little, little lily padded frog. I'm quite happy with this. Ah. Oh. I don't remember if you restart the whole level over. Yeah, that's why this game is as hard as it is. And the frog is tricky. The frog has a lot to signal to you that he's going up and he's going down and that you have to jump and duck his different attacks. The third boss, I don't think has a lot to telegraph his intent. We'll see when we come to it. The urchins are so lame, but you know, we were just trying to think of other sea-based things to have on the ground and to have as an enemy type, and so they're as simple as can be. The turtle and the eel are way more detailed, way, in, in my opinion, in a lot of ways, betterly drawn. I know it's a, a not a word, but also it comes down to more of a... Okay, good. There's a little bit of a flick from the tongue first, so you know that it's coming. That's quite well done, actually. I feel like that's uh, easy to get the hang of. You can see quite clearly when he goes up and when he goes down. You kick the lily pad out from under him. I think that all works really well. Yeah, looking at it now... Oh, jump too soon. This is giving me flashbacks to playing Swords and Souls never seen on the Let's Play channel and being abysmal at some of the minigames. Yeah, I, I, I love the, the art that was done on those. I think the realistic turtles and things look so awesome. And we probably should have had a strategy of like doing less enemy types and uh, focusing more on variants maybe. I'll do everything fish-based. You do everything amphibian. I don't know, breaking it up in a way that would f 
add more cohesion. I'll just do backgrounds. I'll just do the main character. Things like that, you know? But we just never communicated that well. And it's a, a lesson I definitely tried to take forward in into uh, future game jam attempts. Is that it's, it's best to divide things in a logical way and try to emphasize each other's strengths. It takes a fair amount of awareness for sure. If you're getting into your first game jam, it takes a little bit of swallowing your pride, a little bit of learning to trust your team, and not taking on too much of the work yourself. And so it's, a, it's an interesting balance, and it's one of the many different things that I think you get as a benefit from from doing a game jam project. <laughs> that frog laugh, I, I like that the speed increases. I think that's quite well done as well. But even that like maniacal laugh coming from the frog boss, it's really funny. There's like a celebration music to go with completing the level, and it did such an incredible job. I honestly think this takes this from your a very average, simple concept flash game with probably too steep of a learning curve to something really special with that alone. And now we get to do the part of the game that I'm like incapable of doing. Now you have these high tech, I don't know, they look kind of like if uh, Apple computers tried to make a toothpaste product or something. When I look at it now, it looks quite weird. Like it looks dental, hy hygienic in some way. I don't know what's up with them. They're, they're, there's a weird look to them. I also hate, I hate, hate, hate seeing the jankiness in the animation because I think I didn't know how to tween rotations properly. Oh my god, I don't even, I, all, I, all I see is the flaws. I'm afraid this is the last you'll see of me, but don't fret. Otherwise, Mr. Fish will get upset. <laughs> they were just throwing rhymes in. I don't think that was a thing in the other ones. These new state-of-the-art legs would certainly pack a punch if they were arms. But they can kick pretty well, too, using the D button. Accompanying all the other enemies, watch out for cats, sand, castles, and sharks. I genuinely don't remember there being cats. <laughs> the kick is also effective on walruses that are flashing red. Be sure to kick them where it hurts. So, you have your jump, your slide, and your kicking. Three things instantly become so much more difficult, and I feel like I do really... Oh, right. Right. I forgot that the sharks have their own running technology and there's something so amazing about that and so silly and goofy and it opens up all these ridiculous questions of, of why, where any of this would have come from. I think the sharks are even the same color as how, oh no, it, it's my eventual sharks, my eventual sharks in what would have been Pirate Launch 2. I, I borrowed the color palette. The sand castles, obviously not my art, obvious in my mind, but perhaps not. I, I don't think there are cats. I think that would have been... I, I'm, I'm recalling now, that would have been the other artist. And uh, we, we ran out of time. They put a lot of effort in the final boss. I have to make sure I reach the boss to show that off. The uh, metal stilts with sneakers on them that the sharks are running around on were intended to be the second upgrade for the fish and then the third would have been the steampunk i think or maybe maybe i have the order of that wrong but it would have been uh, it, it was a cool tie together to be like oh they kind of have the same technology as you but then there there was a little bit of extra time and it was like well i'm gonna build a, a, a fourth leg design then because it was a relatively easy thing to do and kind of a fun thing to put together Honestly, considering it was my first game jam, I think potentially all of our first game jams, I think we did a fantastic job of setting a reasonable amount of work for ourselves. Uh, and and everyone kind of came through, you know? I, we ended up with like a lot of variety. The music is fantastic. The game runs really smoothly. I'm overall just very impressed with the... Uh, collective ability to put that all together. I feel like it's it's so easy to let your ambition get too high and then you have to start scaling things back dramatically. I honestly don't think we had that much more in mind. That might be because it was a sad it might have been a Saturday Sunday game jam. Maybe we first talked on Friday or something and you know you only have 2 days so you know to keep expectations light. 
See, here's the thing is I don't know his attack patterns. He's so good. He chucks ice high. I guess I know that. I think you maybe just have to jump and duck. And kicking is just to finish him. Maybe you never kick him in the in-betweens. But those attacks just aren't telegraphed the way that I feel like we succeeded in doing with the first two bosses. And that's artificial difficulty, and I, I'm not a big fan of it. Hey, as long as you just, like, make me duck, like, nine times in a row without... <laughs> without having to worry about other moves, then it's super doable. Much easier. Oh god. The randomization in the piranha's balloons was just like a fun little add-in too. That's such an easy thing to add in to, to, I don't know, just make it feel less stale visually. Uh, I think there was intended to be different colors of basically everything. And in a lot of ways, now when I think about it, that is almost just confusion because the the color as well as the shape is another way of communicating to the player what the upcoming obstacle is and that may have just been a little bit ruined if we would have had three different colors of snails and urchins and clams and all that different stuff and i think that might have come down to time rather than any maybe if anyone like it wouldn't have come from me it wouldn't have come from me that that would uh, disorient the player. Someone else might have stepped up and recognized that. Oh, that's a new way to die. I bounced off the turtle. I do remember having like a, a very positive memory of this as well. Just uh, that you, you put in something like 48 hours, you really hammer away at it, you, you give it everything you've got, and then at the end of like Sunday or whatever, I feel like my parents were kind of like, what have you been doing? <laughs> We haven't seen you all weekend. You've been incredibly locked up. And I'd be like, oh, no, I, I'm, I'm working on a thing. Like, uh, it'll it'll be ready in, in 12 hours. <laughs> I'm putting in the work. Uh, I can't wait to show you. And I feel like there was a really fun moment where uh, I clicked submit or whoever uploaded it. You know, it was, it was ready. The deadline had been hit. I cracked a beer <laughs> and <laughs> sat down with my parents and was like, yeah, I made this this weekend like not all of it but I did the art and everything and I remember they, they'd seen other things I had made before little things here and there but I remember them recognizing like oh wow this is really cool and it would have taken some like I don't know some talent I guess to put together I remember I remember that being a really rewarding moment to to have something the turnaround be so quick and be able to share it like that. The more you fail, the more it makes you wish that you could just kick everything. Like, give me some super-powered rocket boots and let me just start booting these turtles. I'm trying to really get in the zone here so I could make it back to the walrus. It would be nice if something communicated to you the, the progress you had made, maybe just like a progress bar at the top or a, a counter or something you were trying to fill up. There's nothing that really lets you know how far along you are. He, he kind of pulls out the ice cube, but then that's, that's about it. The amount of time spent on that is so little, it's almost impossible to react to. But I absolutely love the design of the fancy walrus. It's, it's, it's in line with the humor of the rest of the game, but then with an art style that kind of elevates things and goes beyond. Uh, any of the other silliness that is seen in the game. I have like one more good sh shot at this. Uh, one more run in the tank. You know, I, I, I've I never beaten this. I don't even know if I've ever really made it past the initial encounter with the walrus. I don't know if I've ever even gotten a kickoff on him. And it's it was implemented so last minute that I, I think there was zero play testing for, for the walrus. It was ready to go with like hours left for the game to come out. The animation had to go in as is. The attacks were implemented to, to match what was there. It's amazing that it came out a completed game at all with Newgrounds medals by the way that was like a, that was a fun thing we had as well and I, I think there's only about f five medals that you can get it's something like complete the three levels kick 50 sharks and jump on 10 turtles or something like that I don't think I can do it I've never been able to beat it and I still can't 
I thought it would be fun to crack into my own game files. I don't think there's much of, of anything to, to be shown that you can't already see in the, the finished version of the game there. Uh, with nested within these movie clips, you can see the way the the tank bobbles around, and then within that, there's the animations of the legs. But then the legs themselves are nested clips for the different joint types and the different uh, foot types and things like that, and the code f fishes <laughs> for them to to pull up the correct one based on where you are in the game. So you can see that that foot type was, in fact, the fourth one I drew. Uh, I, I remember sketching some of them out on paper, so maybe at one point I thought it would be for the main character, who I, I don't think we ever named or anything. You can see I did have different colored urchins. Uh, it didn't even get far enough to give them their different colors or anything, so the spikes are all still one color. I do like the animation of, of his squirt gun, for lack of a better word, and the four randomized balloon colors. There's very few game files here to actually show off. Ah, we had the idea of having like a targeting thing. I don't know if that actually really made it up, made it in. I like the gradient on the tongue. I feel like it just helped it stand out a little bit. The eyes look so weird. I don't know why I did them that way, but I like his warty back. I don't know why he doesn't have feet stylistic choices i guess next up about six months later the same year was the newgrounds game jam 2 i had such a positive experience with that first one i couldn't say no to taking part in this the fact that this one's 72 makes me think the first one must have been as well it must have been the friday saturday sunday like i kind of suspected it might have been and this one would have just been winter themed the way the first one was summer themed we made ourselves Team Mammoth, putting together that little intro logo thing. It was a lot of fun. I, it took like a random hour at some point to do that. And yeah, I, I tried to do the backgrounds and the this little menu bit in like, I think I would have drawn it in GIMP probably. I never had Photoshop. I just wanted to make it look texturally a little bit different than uh, vector art in a Flash game. Alvin's Alps was a very last minute name yet again, but I had a lot of fun making that logo. We went for the alliteration entirely for the sake of being able to do a, a logo like that. And when you can't think of a good name for a game, the least you can do is give it a alliteration. And that's something I, I truly fully stand by. <laughs> Junior level design Starman. I have no idea why that is I, I don't know. I don't remember if I gave myself that title or where that came from. Wormy, I think, has worked on a few legit commercial games since then, which is cool. I feel like I keep working with interesting people. I think even Psychosis, who did the programming of, of the last one, eventually went on to do bigger things. And I do remember, it was the same thing, you just apply and then you get randomly sorted together. I do remember Stomp, Ronk, Stomp Rocket being very new to making music. And so... You can hear the music is relatively simplistic. It was created originally for this game. I don't think I like it very much. It's like a one minute long loop. You know, it's so brief. And I think that's the main thing is that it just kind of starts to get a little grating with the way it repeats over and over and over again. You can see our design character in, in true vector art now this time. It's a simple puzzle game. You walk around, hop on the platforms, and, and try to reach the end. But it's one of those types of games where you, you can swap between the characters. And the idea of a baby mammoth just felt incredibly cute and silly. Because it's, you know, it's like a, a big thing made small. And we like that. I like that the names are... Uh, the, the levels are named. Now I remember where that design thing and the credits comes from is because I was basically stuck doing all the level design. Other people were stuck doing other components of the game. You know, it's so weird to have this style of doorway in this icy world. I don't know why it's like that. It's just kind of how games work more than anything. You collect the stick to make the fire, you melt away the doors. I will say, like, this was the our musicians like first time doing music 
And that's totally what game jams are for, right? It should be practice. Things should be potentially rough. Ooh, you can throw, throw snowballs. I did not remember that being a part of the game at all, honestly. Your worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, can you throw snowballs? He can, he can hop and bop. The saber-toothed tiger might be the only piece of art in the game I didn't do. Oh, you can't do it if you're standing in front of a door. I didn't just botch that entirely, did I? Hmm. Yeah, that worked just fine. <laughs> These levels are not complex, and it made me realize how difficult level design is, and it forced me to admit to myself, oh, I am not a level designer. I can complexly lay out these tiles in a way that forces you to move around but essentially none of it feels like a puzzle it's just a, a series like I don't know maybe maybe other flash games aren't as complex as I'm making them out to be but in my mind this is like as simple as it possibly could have been and I just am generally not proud of the, the level design but it was functional, and hey, again, game jams, a big part of what they're about is, is practicing and figuring this stuff out. Maybe there is a real puzzle here, and that makes me suspicious that I did not design this puzzle. Oh, you gotta jump over top from the other side, that makes sense. It's been 10 plus years, okay? I do remember feeling strapped for time. Like, I had it in my mind, great, I'll, I'll be able to set aside my desire to do all the artwork myself, and we'll do it in a more collaborative manner, and it'll it'll be great, you know? This, this is perfect. I, I need to be able to learn to, to let go of some of that control, and and work with, work with people, and, and see what they have to offer. And then, the second artist that we had, uh, was just largely unavailable. They had some things come up that weekend, and they were the human stool. That's gross. It's n wasn't intended to be gross, but looking at it now, it's gross. And you know, they 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 made a, the penguin as well. Little little help from a beast being able to jump around on their head. Yeah, so the penguin and the saber tooth tiger were their specific contributions. It's just funny to think that. You know, because the teams are so slapped together, this is kind of a funny exploit of the way that the hitboxes work for the, the platforming there. It kind of allows you to just climb up those staircases really easily, effectively, I suppose. Hmm. I think there may be a clever bit of double meaning in the title, in that I need help from two separate beasts. How about that? Then there's a separate bit of low platforming for for our main Alvin to have to do as well. I wonder, I wonder who did which levels. When I come across something like this and when I remember the difficulty I had designing levels, I feel as though I can probably take no credit. I would sincerely, truthfully, doubt <laughs> that I I designed that. Oh, you gotta use the mammoth again. See, that's too creative and competent of, of level design. So, so I truly don't think that I would have done it. I think the puzzling in this is okay. Uh, now that I now that I've done more of it, you collect all the sticks. And it melts that away. The funny thing is that all the sticks, there was like no way to not collect the sticks, you know? And now because of that, you, you just have to reset the level, so you have to collect the sticks, there's no two ways about it. But if you hop and bop this incorrectly... There we go! See, maybe that's a little too tricky. Hmm. I probably was supposed to have jumped that. And here's the thing with Game Jam stuff, is you come up with the idea of, Oh, you'll chuck snowballs! And then it becomes totally irrelevant. Because <laughs> it's a mammoth, not an elephant. 
Yeah, you introduce it thinking, wow, what a, a neat idea. We'll design so many puzzles that have to do with this. And then once you try to integrate it into the game properly, you realize like, oh, there's like one instance where this comes up. Uh, we don't have time to think of a puzzle or an interesting way to utilize that as a, as a mechanic. And you know, in, a, in another game, you would either spend the time workshopping it, expanding it, coming up with ways that make it a worthwhile addition to the game, or you would scrap it. In 72 hours, uh, I don't know if it's not breaking the game. It stays in. We already designed one level that utilized it in, in literally any way, so I guess at that point, it stayed in the game. Look at this. We came up with a section where you have to be able to <laughs> aggressively snowball your way through. You have to be chucking snowballs pretty continuously to, to blast through that chunk of things. I wasn't planning to do, to do all the levels. Now I'm kind of curious. I feel like we didn't have that many levels in the game so now i'm just kind of playing around seeing what there is that feels like a graham level design <laughs> a bunch of platforms with like an intended path that you can so obviously skip oh but then it's important on the other way that level seems <laughs> simple enough that that one would have been me this one I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. I, I feel like there's the creativity of putting buttons literally on top of the, the doors. Maybe I don't give myself enough credit, maybe too much. I will say the way Wormy put together, that's the, a, a fun thing that happens there is that the mammoth drops all the way down, but because they're technically in front of a door, you cannot actually swap to them. And each time you open up a door, they drop further down, but you can't swap to the mammoth. You just keep opening up new drops for them. So I doubt I designed this one. <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah, I, it just wasn't my thing. That's fun. That's like a, that's a cool way of, of lacing together the mechanics. And that becomes a little bit impressive. It's not a puzzle still. For a puzzle game, there's barely any puzzling, truly. <laughs> But at least that provides some unique, fun interacting. Now you can finally swap, and now you have to be able to like fully inverse all of that and and re-open up these doors. See, this is, it's not a puzzle because it's too easy to consider a puzzle. Anything in this game is just teeny tiny little bits of progression without any real thought. But this is my favorite level for sure, because that was just really neat. Layering the buttons on top of the doors and everything, it's really, really well done. I am, I will color myself impressed. We got new music. That's exciting. Now it's uh, potentially, you know, about time that that gets swapped out. Hmm. I think maybe you have to go on down. Look at that. That's the first time I hit the icicles. I totally forgot there, there's like a, a freezing animation to go go along with all that. A big X. But again, this loop is like 10 seconds and it's, ah, uh, okay, maybe a, maybe a little different things are happening there. I really like key cards. Uh, being like floppy disks. It's just as funny. It was funny 10 years ago. It becomes increasingly funny to me the further and further we get uh, removed from that technology. This level, they're, they're marginally familiar to me, you know? I, I do remember these different levels. Which is, it's fun to come back to and, and have some recognition. So we, we opened up uh, both the blue and the red. Oh no. I needed Alvin for that. That could be considered a puzzle. <laughs> there was a legit requirement to, to swap characters in order to, to pull that off the way that it was uh, approximately intended. I'd say there's plenty of forgive. There's a good weight to the platforming and just as I'm saying, just as I'm saying, there's a pretty good amount of forgiveness 
to the controls of everything, like climbing up those platforms is easy, sticking your landing can be done with quite a bit of confidence. I think all that worked out really well. Basically, the thing I'm most proud of is the design of our little baby elephant. I hate, I hate the background trees. If They're fine, I guess, but if I try to look at them at all and think about it and pay attention to them, then I instantly hate them. I think I remember redrawing them like three separate times or something. The only other time I had done that type of uh, drawing in GIMP had been for a game Coco Nudge, which I'll probably cover in, a, in another developer commentary someday. Uh, but I, I was really inexperienced with doing that. I was trying things out. I've never been a painter. I certainly wasn't a digital painter. Hmm. I am at a bit of a loss. Perhaps I need to backtrack with the mammoth now. I cannot. This mistakes may have been made. Having a static image in the background is fine, but it really better be uh, an excellent static image if it's going to be the entirety of the background. And that one just isn't. It just isn't that exciting or interesting. It's there. But it's almost so bland that it's like obnoxious. It almost might as, might as well be just a flat background. Maybe I'm being too harsh on it, but I, I truly dislike how that came together. There's where the green key card is relevant. All right, I don't need to switch to the mammoth yet, so I won't send him down here and trap him. Instead, I can use my awesome arsenal of snowballs. I realize that this is basically the ice climber with like a mask and goggles. <laughs> I don't know how aware of that I would have been at the time. I've never played an ice climber game. Oh no. I think I've officially reached my limit for as much Alvin's Alps as I feel like playing. But at the same time, there's a, a, a good to fair chance I'm on like the last level. There were not that many levels. We, we've reached a point where there was no more time to like add or expand mechanics and it was just like, well, let's start pumping out levels, you know? And, and Wormy, this is what I had started to bring up before, did a fantastic job instantly creating a, a level editor, like a very robust one for, for 72 hours. And the fact that we, any of us, could really get into that and try our hand at level design was so fun. And I feel like I do remember uh, there being a level of encouragement between all of us being like, hey, we could like each try this. And I don't think everyone uh, took the opportunity to try it and maybe not, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think everyone designed levels. But the fact that we all had the opportunity to was very cool. And I, I'm, I'm, I remember that just being a very awesome opportunity that I don't know when else I would have had the chance to, to design a, a platformer and, and levels in this way. And I'm very grateful for the way it was able to teach me that like, oh, you know, this isn't my thing and that's okay. If I ever in my life make a true platforming game, I now know I will need to hire an editor or work with someone who has confidence to edit levels. Oh, there is more false steps. Take out the saber tooth. If it wasn't clear as well, uh, Alvin jumps twice as high. I feel like that maybe should have been explained or obvious. Ooh. See, this seems neat. I don't even really remember doing this level, like playing it. <laughs> but it's a neat concept because you can't swap characters while you're standing on top of or above a door like that. And so I, you have to change the level in, in different ways by, by swapping out the buttons like that. Ooh, so I need to be able to I you can you can straddle the buttons which that's That's a neat little exploit actually that like I don't think would have been intended Hmm, and it might not work not the way I thought it would 
Instead, hang out up here, get rid of the greens. This is good level design. This is a puzzle, <laughs> you know? This should have been level four <laughs> or something. Because it's like the first time that we're witnessing truly designed levels or, or puzzling levels. And now I don't really know what to do. Oh god. Okay, if you just hold up and left, totally, totally works in exactly the way I wanted it to. It's funny, uh, such a funny use of the physics in this game to force that, force those jumps to work the way you want them to. But now I am stuck. And I don't know how to get above. There, there's where you have to stand on two, two and one. Again. Really well done on the puzzle. Oh, this is... No. It got me. It got me on that one. Well, now I'm glad I stayed playing. Cause this is this is an enjoyable, interesting puzzle that I, I feel is specifically well done. You know what? Leave them all. Leave them all intact. I don't think it matters anymore at this point. Whew. Okay. Busted out all of them. The false steps complete. There's more! There's more levels! Hot dang! Leap of faith. I Maybe I was supposed to drop down like that. That would make sense. Ooh. Ooh. That was too big of a leap of faith. Too big a one. Well, I should try and explore up top here first, right? Seems a little insane to drop down that early. There's a big drop, but now what? Oh, we can collect a, a nice bundle along the way, and Alvin presumably takes on those the ones that I, I first collected with Mamo, the Mamadou. Again, I, I, I don't think they were ever named. Oh, there's the leap. I'm I'm confident that that block is there as bait, <laughs> and I like that. I think that's a devilish, in a in a very satisfying way. I wish there was like a a, a way to go back to the menu and to observe like a, a level select or something, because I I'm I'm kind of a little bit impressed by the number of levels actually on display here. That's uh impressive. But again, once the, the tools were in place, it was just a matter of mashing out levels as quickly as we could, and essentially regardless of quality. Although I think any of my contributions were, we've, were, reten were potentially past them already. Hmm. See, that was almost too simple. That's a familiar st starting point for a level having the mammoth there to jump you over. Ooh, it almost seems like you could forget to do that. And then be left having to reset the level. That's cruel. I went searching. There are 18 levels. House key is, in fact, the last level. Uh, it looked from the walkthrough I found, which is funny. There's like a very old, very grainy walkthrough on YouTube <laughs> from the looks of it. It is a, a large level, and I presume rather unforgiving. Hmm, would there be any reason not to collect that immediately? That seems like that would be like a trick, you know? So open that up. We still need the reds, so do not take the shortcut. <laughs> that, that affected nothing. <laughs> Regardless, yeah, we, we can just go ahead and open up the reds. As far as I'm seeing and thinking, jump across. We need all those greens. Oh, curses. See, all this platforming is easy and forgiving. This one jump, that's a pain. That's a, that's a doozy. Oh, this funny randomization of the enemies. It was a saber tooth last time. This is right on the cusp of potentially too difficult of, of platforming. Uh, I need the yellow for the mammoth down below. 
building entire chunks of level out of out of key cardable things like that is kind of fun. It's just like a it's just like a fun way to do things. Do you see that little trick there that you had to have jumped across the door? How about that? I feel like I kind of anticipated that there would be a, a, a wee little bit of a trick there. No, I'm a dumb, I'm a dumb mammoth. That sucks. Beaten by my own game. You know, I didn't finish fish out of water. I should at least finish one of these games, like complete it, and show some competency. Not just a game making, but game playing. I have a, I have a lot to prove. There's a lot on the line here. That's not. It's not going to prove anything to anyone. The music is simple in a way that reminds me of old DOS games that I grew up playing, and in that regard, I do quite enjoy it. But it's a. Uh, it's too repetitive. The style of music and the the sounds themselves. Are, are, are not a terrible, it just is too much of a loop. I'm kind of suspicious now when I think about it that they had joined the team as a level designer or, or a writer or any sort of other such contribution. Uh, we never even made like an animated, we made an animated intro for the team mammoths, but not for the game the way we did Fish Out of Water. There's no story here, which that's kind of a bit of a bummer to realize that that effort was never put in or the time was never found. But yeah, I think, oh no, 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 panic, panic. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that they didn't even consider themselves uh, a musician. There's a, a notable, I easily identifiable reason why this is the last level. You know, I would say I am, you know, I would say I've never, I've never considered myself particularly proud of this game. I was so impressed with how Fish Out of Water came together, my first game jam, uh, I'm happy with the art, I think it looks good, the everything that everyone else had to contribute I think came together in really meaningful ways, and it was like a really exciting end result, and I, like a lot to, to think highly of. Oh, I remember this now, you kind of hit your head on these platforms. I might not finish the game, I don't think I want to, because I remember that section being really, really horribly unfair. I'll take one more attempt. I think I had never considered myself proud of this game. Uh, I think there were things that I, I just didn't like how they came together, parts of it that I didn't really like how they looked, I think even just the colors of the main character could be could be sharper. I liked the idea of them being quite cold, but then I went so bold on the color of these doors and things that I, it, it doesn't really mash up very well. Playing it here, I think there are still quite a few things to be proud of. I think some of the levels are interesting. I don't think anything about the puzzles are that hard with the exception of like two levels. I think the character design, especially for the mammoth, is quite cute. The tile sets are beyond simplistic. And we we ran out of time, actually, you'll notice. This is an interesting thing you'll notice in those first few levels. The tiles are done in a way where they, they paint themselves together and are continuous. And on the later levels, they're just blocks. And that was a time thing. We just didn't have time to do it the other way. And I totally forgot about that till just now. Uh, the, the main menu drawing looks kind of good. This background looks atrocious. Uh, for, for everything I look at that I think, hey, that turned out better than I remember. I think, I think that's, uh, not too bad. There are still things about it that I just don't think worked that well. And so I'm, I, I'm quite iffy on this game. I feel like there was, there was m higher ambitions of different mechanics and things and, uh, a more reasonable learning curve of how they would all be rolled out that we just never achieved because of uh, being low on time, essentially. Oh, boy, oh boy. And you gotta do that once more going across there. And once more going across here. Yes. Okay, I at least have that. I don't even remember where that other door is now. I think it's a really simple backtrack. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. No. No, I need the mammoth. That's so unfair. 
to me, and I guess to every other person who's ever played this game, but specifically to me. <laughs> I have done this little section so many times. I'm sweating, I'm sweating, and I'm done, and I'm done. That's enough of that game. <laughs> Apparently don't even really have any files to show. Uh, this is showing what one block height is and what two block heights height is, and that's what the character had to be. The mammoth had to be that tall. All the blocks in the game are that tall. The doorways are that tall. There's, like, literally nothing else to show. There would have been more to it. I just literally don't know where it all went. And the last of these I ever took part in was about two years after the first July 2012. I wasn't able to take part in a bunch with, with college, but I would have had uh, time off during the summer here. And we put together Jerry's Grueling Garden. Again, this would have been the last possible minute naming. <laughs> that was just a really running thread. I really like how the logo came together. I kind of remember doing that. I don't think I did the rest of, of the menu here. I think Kashi did a lot of the art actually, and I think I ended up having to contribute less art than I had hoped to, which is a little bit too bad. There was an interesting thing with this one, which works when you have like 12 teams in a game jam rather than having, say, 400 people all participating in Ludum Dare, or 400 teams or whatever, you give them all the same mechanic to work off of. This was an interesting pool of mechanics. I don't remember how those were choos chosen or distributed, but everyone was given a random category, and we had raising. And I think at one point we had some more ambitious, really ambitious ideas of how this was all going to work. It's been a long time since I played this one, because I remember it being a frustrating process, thinking that none of it was matching the vision that I had in my head, and that the vision I had in my head wasn't matching what other people had in theirs. And I don't remember it being, like, any conflict. I don't remember people being mad at each other. It just wasn't coming together, and it just wasn't a great fit. And I was very lucky that the process was very smooth in those two other random game jams of people I'd never spoken to before. Jerry has lost all of his seeds in his giant garden and wants to get them back. Climb up leaves and attack your way through pests to collect all the leaves in the level. Move, attack, and jump. I don't think it's it's that complex. There's not that many levels. I like this level select screen. It's simple, but it, it works, I guess. It could be more. There's such a weird mismatching of styles, mishmashing of styles. I really like the design for Jerry. I think that came together spectacularly. Even that little seed pod looks like pretty good. You can control the directions of the plants. There's this really cool idea that you, you start each level by watering the plant and then it, it grows around and sprouts out the platforms that you will then jump around on. I guess there was games like Line Rider, or there's that one with like the mummy and the line where you like trace your way through the level and you have limited ink and things like that. And I think that's what we were going for. <laughs> the way he looks up, the uh, the face as he looks up is just absurd. That's so unnecessary. Mm, I totally forgot that the platforms like collapse when you jump on them. That's pretty cool. You also kind of bounce off them. You just collect all the seeds and you're able to move on. I think conceptually, the game is fantastic. And I, I think it it generally works quite well. You can do interesting things if you feel that like there aren't enough platforms forming in a given area. There's those thorns you have to worry about. And at the end of it, oh god, I didn't mean to do any of that. Luckily the leaves come back. <laughs> Because otherwise I would have just totally screwed myself. I, I don't, re I don't even remember the enemies. I just remember being disappointed in the end product. Even though when I look at it now, I think the the art looks clean. Uh, the, I don't know. It, 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 it's not as bad as I remember. The concept is even a little bit stronger than I remember. Some of this it does just get difficult though. It's, it, it's also strange that you have seemingly unlimited plant to work with. I feel like that's maybe a little bit poorly thought out in a way that we didn't think to... 
limit that and force the player's hand, but maybe there was a desire for giving the, the player a lot of freedom. The, the, the death looks good. It reminds me of Mario. It is a little bit slow, you know? You spent all that time mapping out a very specific path, which I want them to be a little lower this time, so it's easier to collect the seeds. You want a place to get off, and then to, to hop back to it and continue your seed collecting. I don't, I don't know, that, that might have been stupid, might have screwed that up just there and made it more difficult than it needed to be. All that works. And the, the levels are just very large, so there's all this time, extra time being spent drawing out the level, and then at, at the end of it, you may have screwed up in a very fundamental way, and suddenly you're you're left waiting, drawing all of it out again. There we go. Luckily that worked. You can hack your way through, like Minecraft, I guess. I guess you could say we stole that one. I legit don't even know if that was intentional or anything. And now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck, which is stupid, and I, I don't think I've ever seen happen. There we go. I remember kind of disliking the feel of the controls in this game. Like, it, we made them really floaty intentionally because of the way the game kind of bounces you around. But I think there was more fundamental issues at play here that kind of had to do with just the the way you move around in this game. You, th that's, that's part of the looking up, is that you can attack up like that. Uh, but we, na we made the controls floaty, you know, to make sure you can do more precise platforming. <laughs> then stuff like that happens, which you obviously don't want. Luckily, you can dig down, too. Good. I kind of forgot that that was implemented. But it often means you miss your targets. Uh, you're just kind of frustrated being tossed around the ski screen, trying to do things a very specific way and that not ma quite matching your expectation. And I think there's just a, a level of frustration that that causes me playing it, that I've always just assumed would also irritate someone else playing. Like, you know, in Alvin's Alps, if you happen to dislike the music or something, you can turn off the music. If you find the controls in this floaty or the the way that the leaves appear and disappear and kind of leave you behind unfair in some way, there's unfortunately nothing to be done about it. I do like that you can, you can whack those guys. I think the, the simplicity of like a little red animation there while they drop out of the map is effective. I do remember hating stuff like that. You just get stuck in these insane loops. Oh God keep bouncing Ugh. Ugh, there's there's things about this game that I like but at large it really frustrates me it still does I was hopeful I would come back around to it the way I did Alvin's Alps I don't even think I can bring myself to play the whole thing because this one frustrates me and coming back the idea is interesting it's neat I remember it being more ambitious than it ended up being. I feel like we almost wanted you to be able to trace it out and draw it like you do in some of those other games. It's hard to remember. I wish so badly it was just a Google Doc so I could pull that back up and see word for word what our, what our concepts and ideas were and how that didn't really become reality. Ah, it's interesting to look back at, but this one still does frustrate me a little. <laughs> Between a little and a lot. I don't know how much of that is actually even the game's fault. I think it just brings back up those memories of it being like a, not as enjoyable of a process as the other two. I have quite a few files to, to open up to look at for this one. Apparently I drew that B. I didn't remember drawing, <laughs> drawing the B. Uh, there's like a ladybug here too that I guess I drew and it has a little, little walking animation and these like spiky dots. It's a very aggressive like attack based ladybug. I guess that would have come up later if I would have stuck it through but I could not bring myself to do it. Now I remember this too is that there's this design philosophy of making sure you have a core mechanic and then going out from there and, and building a game in that way 
and the organizer of the game jam was really promoting this and they would hand you this circle with your theme in the middle and then you had to come up with how that built out from there so we started with raise you raise your plant hop on the leaves remove enemies collect seeds progress through levels rid part rid gardens of pests and i think that is a, a misuse and misunderstanding when i look at it now of how these rings are meant to work core mechanics secondary progression and narrative or hero myth so this would be intended to be like angry birds you fling your birds remove the pigs complete levels and revenge uh, buying buildings become the mayor so even that even that i don't know if i like that as as much of a way of thinking through game design i think part of that is just at odds with how i think i i like the idea of having a starting mechanic and building outwards but this feels at odds with how i approach game design and so that's probably part of why that just never clicked for me to to try and build a game in that way oh that's uh a little interesting i don't even remember what the intent of that would have been why there's a pot plant pot that unfurls and and lights up like that do not remember <laughs> what purpose that would have had uh the thorns are simple you can see like a, a seam there where they they loop through i think that looks just fine i don't remember i don't remember at all what that's for <laughs> maybe that was the the end of the game or whatever you would achieve that I have a file named Final Adjustments, which would have been just where the last few parts of the game, pieces of the puzzle, started to take shape and, and came together. That logo, it's messy, I guess, but I think it also kind of looks good. Final Adjustments would have been things like the, the hours before sort of thing that you're, you're slapping together trying to just put a cap on this. I think the logo is messy, but in kind of a fun, effective way, stylish base font couple layers drop a shadow on it i think it looks pretty good <laughs> this would have been me just intentionally writing things stupidly programming the artist i am the artist get mang <laughs> well i'm glad i can make myself laugh at that like nine years later i really liked jerry i like the colors I, I feel like, I, I don't know, he just, he just, the design is good. Drawing him looking in the different angles and things was kind of fun. I liked him, and that was like the first thing I did. We were like, we got to get a main character in this game, get things started. And I remember starting off on this really high note and being really happy with that. And then being kind of frustrated with every step after it. And I, I, I'm thinking I remember now that I drew this and was kind of like, good night, guys. I, I'm sorry. The game jam started at like 10 p.m. for me, and so this was all I had time to do. And I remember coming back, and I think a lot of the brainstorming and, and development of the concepts of the game took place without me. And so I think at the heart of it, it really comes down to being kind of butthurt about being left out. Different colors of hats. I guess I was just demoing how, how it might look with different colors and trying to nail down what would look best in in game i have a file titled undercover lover and i don't know why oh it's it's just an assembled bit of game files just a bunch of the different things all in one file that i guess i would have sent off this makes me think that the idea would have been to grow and raise something out of this base plot that then you make it reach here and then you know you're planting the seeds you collected or something i guess it never never made it in never made sense never had a place for it tile example this is just a random file i had who knows it is very hard to think of what some of these ideas would have been overall game jamming is just a ton of fun i really liked being paired with random people and just engaging with other people seeing their differences in their opinions and how they approach game design and, and hearing ideas from other people but now and again it doesn't work out and it's like frustrating but it's a commitment of a few days and so it doesn't really matter in the end i did do one other new grounds game jam 
one that I think is probably the best thing I made for a game jam, and it definitely is going to get its own video, and I still hold on to it in the far off hope that I still someday turn it into a full game, and so I kind of hesitate to share that. I think it might have even come before this one, because I see a lot of like the stylistic influences I had in that game carrying forward here. Ooh boy, I tell ya, that's a, a heck of a thing. These videos always end up longer than I expect them to be because it turns into half let's play, half design talk. It's just it's just fun for me to revisit all these things. The jams were a lot of fun. I hope to do more of them in my future. Please ask me questions. I don't know. We'll, we'll do something with, <laughs> with this. Maybe it was silly of me to think I could fit three of these into one video, but I kind of also thought to myself, I, I made these games in so little time, surely they take such a little amount of time to play. And that was just a poor estimate on my part. Thank you to patrons of the channel, thank you for bearing with me. I had a video fully lined up, ready to go, but it's being disputed with copyright stuff and now I have to file against the copyright and hope that that passes. And if they don't get back to me, then you have to wait 30 days for that to expire. So the video I had ready is unavailable. So I just put this together instead. So thank you for your patience. Hopefully we'll have some fun new stuff ready to go soon. Thank you all so much for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.